The sarcophagus of Junius Besos is a really interesting piece. What we see is very Christian imagery rather than something that is going to be universal. Now, Besos himself is going to be a prefect of Rome, so someone who is in charge of the city. He converts on his deathbed to Christianity, very common for the time, because maybe he followed Christian practices and they just weren't really acceptable throughout much of his lifetime. There are all sorts of possible reasons. We also see it decorated on three sides. Why? Well, when you think about it, if it's pushed up against a wall, you wouldn't decorate the fourth side. And we see two registers, two levels, with each with five framed scenes. We also see Greek and Roman architectural influence, arches, pediments, the columns, for example. And we see Old and New Testament scenes. Old Testament on the bottom, New Testament above, and each one kind of reflecting ideas of the other. What we're seeing really is sort of a dogmatic statement on Christianity. So in the center, we see Jesus on that upper level. And he seems to be transferring the law, transferring power from Jesus to Peter and Paul, the two men on either side. One becoming really the person in charge of the hierarchy of the church, the other being the spiritual guide of Christianity. And the Old Testament is below because it prefigures what is happening above. So they play off of one another. They are trying to give us these ideas of without one, we can't have the other. Sort of like looking at history or looking at a story, which makes a lot of sense. In terms of focus, most of the images that we see are images of triumph, and images of salvation. We're not looking at sadness and images of death. So we're looking at something that is going to be a little more positive. However, being from around the fourth century, middle, middle of the fourth century, what you also notice is that, for example, the proportions aren't quite right. The heads are a little bit larger. The bodies are a little bit stockier. That decline in Roman art is, of course, going to affect Christian art as well, the Christians being part of Rome. So we see commonality in what we're looking at. And it gives you an idea. If you think back to the uh, four tetrarchs, those four rulers that we saw at the end of the Roman Empire, that sculpture fits in very well with these ideas or the Arch of Constantine and some of the sculpture there reflecting some of the imagery that we see here in terms of how they're handling the human form, proportion, and general art what we might call artistic skill today. 